Wow. That is chilling. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being on the call. The playback for this call is 424-203-8099. Uh, you can punch in the same participant code, 819-054. I, too, am proud of the American flag, that ragged old flag. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the weekly call for the Republic for the United States of America. My name is Kelby. Today is Wednesday, July 20th, 2010. This is an introduction call for the people of the all capital letter United States of America Corporation, its employees, law enforcement, and especially the United States Corporation 14th Amendment citizens. Special thank you to those men and women who served in our armed services. The, the Republic government called the Republic for the United States of America has been re-inhabited. We are law-abiding, peaceful Americans that simply found some pretty significant truths. And we're simply sharing them with you and the rest of the world. So get ready to hear things that are going to sound impossible. Get ready to understand that you're about to be a part of history. I welcome each and every one of you to the Republic for the United States of America. But as we do every week, we pray and we invite God the Father to be a part of our meeting. So I yield the floor to Mr. Wade Butler. Wade, would you please open us up in prayer? Thank you, Kelby. You know, we are in a time when we are literally out gleaning fields for what we can get, I guess you would say. We're trying to, to take what little harvest is out there and hold on to it to get us to survive to the next point where God advances us. It's out of Ruth 2, chapter 2 and 3. And Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, Let me go out into the field and glean ears of corn after him whose sight I will find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned the field after the reapers. And because of that, uh, Boaz saw her and asked who she was and took her in. And she ended up inheriting a major portion of what goods, services, finances were needed for her to be able to go forward and help establish the kingdom of God. You know, every one of us is in that situation right now. We need to be able to recognize that we're gleaning, that we have fields, and those fields are becoming ripe for harvest, and we're going to harvest a great, great uh, amount from those fields. To some, it's going to be finances. Some, it's going to be healing. Some, it's going to be, uh, well, you know, just overall uh, business increase. Our houses might be paid off. Or maybe it's going to be the situation where it's going to be our loved ones. But there's a time of harvest that is at hand, and God is saying, I'm sending out the laborers. And those that uh, harvest will overtake the source. We're literally coming into that time, that, that season where God is moving on everyone's behalf. And I know it's hard to see, but he's sending forth angels. So what we are doing is we are reestablishing the kingdom of God or helping reestablish the kingdom of God because he said it's going to be a long process, and we're part of it. God chose us for such a time as this. So we want to welcome everybody here, and we want to invite you to become a part of what we're doing and to understand what we're doing. So I'm going to go to the Father. His formal name is Yahweh. And I'm going to ask him in the formal name of Jesus, which is Yeshua, uh, to bless us, to give us wisdom, discernment, eyes to see and ears to hear, that all that we would do would be like Christ, that we'd be blessed and we'd be part of bringing about the kingdom to its fullness, that we'd be able to reap and harvest at the same time. Father, we come in your precious name, the name of Yahweh, and in the precious name of your son, Yeshua, asking that you would give each and every one of us that's on this call and involved with the Republic and in this nation, eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart of understanding to know that we were chosen for such a time as this. We were born for such a time as this. We've been put on the earth for such a time as this. To be able to come before you and bring praise and thanksgiving that we could be a part of a harvest of thy kingdom work that will help change a nation and change a world, that will help reestablish what guidelines you have set forth in your word, and that we can be a help to our friend and our neighbor and encourage people to come and see. Come and take a look. Come and see what 
we have to offer because the harvest might be far greater than what you are able to do where you are. So, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you and ask that uh, the words that are spoken this night would land on good soil, that as they're sown, someone will come along and harvest and bring us about into a place of abundance for thy glory, thy honor, and thy praise. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ's name, we give thanks and have our being. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Wade. Uh, once again, you have a great way with words. Um, earlier I said to the all-capital letter United States of America Corporation that seemingly would be a strange thing to say. Well, tonight I'd like to specifically talk about why it is not a lawful form of government and the reason that you can't fix this corporation as it exists. Before we go into that, um, I do have some announcements. Uh, I don't see the party on the line yet, so I'm going to skip right through. Um, please remember that there uh, are a couple new calls on Thursdays and on Sundays. The Thursday call is uh, called the Republic Roundtable. This is basically uh, where you get to know the leaders within the Republic. Um, Robert Zuluaga is the moderator for this call, and uh, again, it's Thursdays at 6 p.m. Uh, I'll be announcing the phone number in just a second. We're also going to have uh, a our third call this Sunday. Um, it, uh, it's training, better known as the Fireside Chat. You're going to get great training on the founding documents of our country. This call is hosted by the Republic Vice President Charles Wright and the California Republic Governor Shalene Nightingale. The number for the Thursday call, the Republic Roundtable, is 712-432-0075. Participant code is 851-350. And the number for the Sunday call is 424-203-8000. And it's the same participant code as tonight's call, 819-054. Again, both calls start at 6 p.m. So be mindful of that. Um, and I do see that uh, Mr. Rick Weiner is on the phone uh, at this time. Rick, I'd like to yield the floor for any announcements that you may have. Very good, Kelby. Can you hear me okay? I can. Very good, sir. Uh, just wanted to bring the uh, new, people, new people and any members of the Republic on board here a uh, short update having to do with the Republic Records Bureau. We uh, are making quite a bit of headway putting together uh, our database that was uh, lost back at the first part of the year. Um, this time we are actually working with committees in Congress to set things up to where we have input from the people as to how it's going to be set up so that it's not a top-down structure like it was perceived at first. Uh, the IDs are in the, in the stage where they uh, the different uh, members of uh, the IT team will uh, have to uh, decide as to whether or not uh, certain logos, certain seals, those type of things should be on our IDs along with the basic information. Uh, I'm very proud of the work that they put together, uh, one especially uh, Brad Lucek, who is a representative uh, of the House in uh, Arizona. He brought up and brought to everyone's attention why do we have all the information that we have on our de facto driver's license right now? Why do they need an exact date, date of birth? Why do they need an exact address? And, and the answer, of course, is because it's a corporate world and you are literally gaining a privilege from them rather than a right. So that's one of the many things that Congress is going to look at and rule on in the republic because in a republic form of government, we don't necessarily need all of that information except perhaps on an emergency basis if we were trying to contact somebody because, Kelby, let's say, for instance, we recovered your vehicle. It was stolen by some nefarious character. Well, we would want a database similar to what the de facto has got where you could run that VIN number or the plate on the back would also identify it as a belonging to a member of the Republic, and that numbering system, whatever we come up with, would be able to get into the database in the Republic Records Bureau and be able to trace back to the uh, owner. And hopefully we would be able to have enough contact information to be able to let them know, hey, we recovered that particular motor vehicle. 
the second half of what I'm extremely proud that's coming together from all of the members uh, on the teams that we're working with is it was pointed out that the first IDs that we came out with were a bit on the premer pre premature side because everybody was issued IDs, but they really didn't understand the ramifications of having a separate ID system from the de facto driver's license and the motor vehicle vehicle registrations. And the main problem everybody had, Shelby, we've had how many stories of people running into an officer, he identifies their name, goes to his uh, NCIC computer system, and says, well, I show here that you've got a valid contract with uh, our government uh, that you've never uh, untangled yourself from, and so literally you're uh, a fraud in one direction or other. Either you're a fraud in your republic or you're a fraud in the de facto. So this time around, as the ID system comes out, there's going to be quite a bit of education that goes along with it. Um, I don't have it figured out by any means, and none of us do yet. But what we're going to put out is people literally need to, in this republic, be responsible for their own actions. What that means is if you have a driver's license or you have a uh, license plate uh, granting you the privileges within the de facto, you simply need to fill out a proper um, form or a, a proper letter that goes back to those people that you had the contract with, uh, your state motor vehicle department, or in some cases the uh, DOT system, and you need to simply say, uh, thank you very much for uh, granting me that privilege. However, I have uh, understand now better my rights. Uh, I'm a member of the Republic as of here's my Declaration of Sovereign Intent, and please uh, remove my name and information from your database. And if you do it by registered mail, then you have a way to prove to that officer that you have done what is necessary and taken care of your situation altogether. And Kelby, that's literally where we're at right now with the Republic Records Bureau. Thank you, Rick. It was actually uh, probably the best explanation we've had on the identifications for quite some time, so I appreciate you coming onto the phone and, uh, and giving us an update. Not a problem. Uh, it will be a little bit lengthier, the same information on Thursday for uh, all the uh, rest of the members of, uh, of the Republic also. So, Kelby, thank you so much for your time. I'll, I'll sign off here unless you've got something else, sir. No, uh, God bless. Have a good night. Very good, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let's, have, uh, let's have a little bit of training. Um, we're going to have some key definitions uh, of some words right now, and we're also going to talk about some time frames of what happened in our country. Um, I'm going to unmute uh, my co-host, Ken Cousins, Jim Fitzgerald, Robert Zuzawaga. Gentlemen, if you at any time while I am talking uh, want to speak up uh, in particular to a subject, just say my name and I will yield the floor. I'd love to hear what you all uh, have to say, and then uh, when we get uh, done, uh, we'll have a topic. Uh, of discussion. Key words. When a word is applied in a contract, it is the writer's intent on what that word means. This is very important when we talk about words, like the word person. Person in uh, Black's Law definition does mean a real living man or woman, but also means a corporation. I never knew in my entire life that when a judge was asking me if I was this person, he was asking me, was I this corporation? So, let's learn a couple of very important words, because you're going to hear them a lot in, in the Republic. Definition of the word de facto. Its literal definition is existing, in fact, whether legally recognized or not. In other words, not by right and not by law. That's the existing government you have, and I'll explain why in a minute. Definition of the word de jure. The literal definition is, according to law, by right, or lawful and original. These two words, de facto and de jure, are critical in your training. The Obama administration or government that you are most likely a part of simply exists in fact and have no lawful right to exist. I'll explain that to you in just one minute. The Republic for the United States of America reseated the government that was vacated in 18 meaning the call that you are on tonight is the lawful, rightful government on the land. 
I know it's a heavy statement. I'm smiling as I say it because it's true. 